Hey guys, welcome back to another video on my brand new G80 M3 competition. It's about a week after I picked it up from Ceramic Pro and I've only managed to cover 300 miles because I've had a couple of press cars in that time and the weather's been pretty tragic. Today I'm heading to B&T Tyres in Bletchley, which is very local to me, to get these Pirelli P0s taken off and put some Michelin Pilot Sport 4S's on it. I'm sure none of you can see that coming. I'm going to be keeping these tyres in storage so that when I trade this car back in or give it back to Tony, I'll put the P0s back on it so essentially it will have a very fresh set of P0s on it. So it's not a complete waste if you're thinking about doing that with your M3 or M4. Just consider that. Consider that when you come to trading it back in, you'll have a fresh set of tyres to put on it so you're not going to get charged for tyres, etc. After we've done that, we're going to head up to Mike at Motec. Quick visit there, I'm just going to grab some 10mm spacers. I'm then going to head right up towards Manchester to Suspension Secrets. And those guys are going to do a proper alignment on this brand new car. It may seem a bit odd, you probably think, well, it's going to come pretty straight out of the factory, which it is, but there is some adjustments you can do to the car to make it a bit sharper for spirited driving or track driving, even with the complete stock setup. So really looking forward to going and seeing those guys. It's going to be an exciting day. I might pop in and see my good mate Rolini on the way too. So hopefully you enjoy this video. Thanks a lot for watching. sick of me banging on about Michelin tyres but honestly in the very boring drive that I've had up to Motec which has consisted mostly of the M1 motorway the difference in ride quality is noticeable straight away I just wish that these cars all came with Michelins just takes the edge off obviously I haven't got to push the tyres but I know that they're going to perform better than the P0s especially in the wet weather here I am Motec and Motec Mike. Hello, hello, you all right? Good mate, how are you? Not bad, love it, I really like it, good plate. Thank you very much. Nice yeah. colour combo as well. And uh, Mike's new M440i project car, um, which does look very, very good in real life. It's nice having them together and you can certainly notice the archers and stuff on the M car compared to the... Oh, completely, yeah. They're definitely a lot more aggressive, these M3s and M4s. And parking next to the M light, you can see... You can call it an M light? Yeah, M light, yeah. You can see why yeah. they're an M light. I'm here today, as you know, to pick up some uh, TPI spacers for the M3. Yep. Uh, and we're going to go with 10 mil all Front around. and rear, yeah, because we're not lowering the car, which is going to go something really subtle. We don't want anything to sort of stand out. But these original wheels just sit way too far in. So 10 mil from front and rear, square it off, it should just look OEM plus. Obviously, you're probably very familiar with Motec. I mean, how long have you been at this premises? Uh, a little over three years now. Three years, okay. Yep. Well, they've outgrown it because they're always flat out down here. And actually, 
they're just about to move into a really special new premises, which I haven't seen yet. No. I thought I was going to see today, but Mike's decided There's wet to... wet paints, so he has to wait like everybody else. But next time we get Joe back in, maybe we can make it a little louder. Comment down below, should he buy an oh, exhaust? Oh, an exhaust. What, like a, a Remus, maybe? Like a real YouTuber would put an exhaust <laughs> on their car. <laughs> yes, that's very true. Anyway, um, these are yours. Thanks, mate. I appreciate it, You're as always. No worries. Uh, lovely to see you guys. Um, Bonnie, Jay behind the camera, and, uh, and obviously Nick. Um, yeah, who does all the fixing. You join me a good few hours later and I'm following my very good friend Rellini in his beautiful Sunset Orange M2 composition along the Cat and Fiddle Road, I think that's what it's called, up in Derbyshire. Now, like many roads in Derbyshire, speed limits are pretty strict and this one is a 50 pretty much the whole way. But the good thing is, but even at 50, through the twisty sections, it's extremely entertaining, this road. In fact, you have to slow down to about 30 in some of it, as you, you'll see in a second. So I thought I'd just share a little section of this road with you guys at sensible speeds, and well within the speed limit, just to show you it's a beautiful place up here, it really is. It's uh, reasonably late into the evening, the sun's about to set, so it's very quiet up here. But yeah, really, really nice. Really, really beautiful setting. The PS4S is, I mean, as I kind of touched upon earlier on, they just feel brilliant. And to me, mentally, knowing that I have some of Michelin's absolute finest rubber underneath me really inspires me with confidence, especially when it does rain just so good in the wet these tyres they really are so we had to slow down to 40 through there <laughs> but yeah what a piece of road what an amazing place We're here at Suspension Secrets. This is Matt, the founder, owner, and magician that works here. Uh, we're gonna to talk to Matt in two seconds. It was Carmad Dad who actually put these guys on the map for me. Um, good friend of mine. Since then, I've seen you guys literally pop up everywhere, yep. especially racetracks, track days, etc. Uh, so yeah, I'd heard lots of good things about you guys, and uh, I'm finally here, and you've turned my M3 into <laughs> Frankenstein, yeah. I've been speaking to Matt this morning and he's been showing me everything they do here. It's, it's quite mind-blowing. I've learned so much about cars in one morning, um, especially about the physics of suspension, how it all works, because there's so much to it. Obviously, I know camber, I know tow, I kind of know what most of them do, but I mean, what you've been talking to me about this morning, it's amazing. I wish, I wish I'd got all of that on camera. <laughs> um, but. Matt, lovely to meet you, and yeah, thanks, you too. thanks for having down. me down. Yeah, no worries at all. Thanks for coming. Um, could we talk a little bit about yeah what well what you've discovered with the because this is the first G80 you've had. Yeah, this is the first one we've had in. Yeah, so we were just interested to have a look as well, first of all, and more suspension components, what arms it carries, and how the top mounts are, how it crosses over with the F series stuff. So yep. it's been nice to have a look at that, and, and I've, there's a lot of similarities in terms of actual physical components. Sure. Um, the front end shares a lot with the, the new shape X3M competition and stuff like that. Rear end shares a lot with the F series M4s, M3s, by the looks of it. So very similar stuff, yep. um, which is always nice to see. And just also take a look at how it comes out the factory geometry wise, because a common issue with the F series cars, they're notorious for the outer edge tire wear, yes. and they don't run enough camber. So they're sort of 0 0.8 to 1 degrees as standard. Um, which is nowhere near enough for, for pushing it hard. Yeah. So that's why camber plates are such a common upgrade to get the camber you need to really handle nice and save your tires. Yeah. But it's nice to see on this, they've almost listened to that in a way, um, and they've got a good amount of camber, 1.8 degrees of camber standard on the front of this, which yeah. is 
a good healthy amount for fast road so it's nice to see that shift to sort of give you the front end which is a nice way to have the car and comparing that to what well, we've got a lovely m4 cs just off camera there or yep. let's say the the f80 m3 for argument's sake yeah so out of the factory that would have what what roughly uh, between 0.8 and one degree okay like so it's so almost max. double the camber yeah. on the new one no exactly yeah about double which is a huge a huge increase it's great to see sure then the the flip side of that though oddly is the rear end on these yep. is the thing that needs to work so that they don't really have a lot of camber whatsoever on the rear yep. and really aggressive toe settings for grip and and traction and forward momentum yes. which will induce a bit of understeer it'll through a corner oddly it'll roll off the camber slightly okay and lead towards slight oversteer but as soon as you break the traction it'll go back onto its contact patch and regrip yep. so it will lead to quite a twitchy oversteer sensation yep oversteer sensation and <laughs> um, so what that'll do is almost upset the car a little bit so with the more cam that we're going to add on to that it's going to load up through the corner progressively yep. onto the full contact patch towards the apex and then lean back off it as you straighten back up and get back on the throttle so it would deliver a more natural driving feel through the corner more balanced neutral chassis sure and that's i mean that's exactly what i've felt i've been out on track in a couple of them um and and i mean firstly the front end as we talked about off yep. camera front end's amazing that completely ties in with the fact that yep. well we've got wider rubber 275 section on the new g80 g82 yep. Uh, we've obviously got a lot more stiffening, so the front end itself is a lot more planted. Mm. But yeah, the, the, the negative camber that comes out of the factory, that explains a lot of that. Yep. But, and you talking about the traction in the rear end is exactly what I've experienced as well. Phenomenal traction, like yep. out, out of corner. But talking about the way it break, its breakaway is quite nice and smooth. But when you're on the limit, or my limit, you're right. You, you constantly, when I've watched my videos back on track, it's out in out That's in it. i'm yeah. correcting it all Always the time fighting that battle through the corner so yeah. it's finding grip not finding grip find, as it's rolling through the tire exactly. essentially yep. okay so you're um. rolling through it with grip off the contact patch losing yep. grip back onto the contact patch gaining grip rolling as you load back up again off slide and it's just that constant cycle through the corner yeah whereas this way it'll load progressively to its maximum yep hold and then load back off it and you'll feel that as well exactly you can stay on the throttle it's yeah. a much more sort of smooth throttle through the corner and you'll be able to get back on the throttle i love my cars and i yeah i, I don't claim to know i'm 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 not mechanically minded like like you are um and and i understand the physics of a lot of cars I, you know i'm learning more and more about track stuff the more i do obviously yeah um but just all of the the physics and stuff behind what all of the adjustments do yep um the, the, the pneumatics if you like you're talking about kinematics, earlier, kinematics yep. sorry pneumatics right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> almost um but yeah all, all of all of that I, I mean there's just so much to to car setup and and i think when when you see someone like um leighton who you look after with his yep. gt gt3 rs isn't it yep. i mean that car and you know you're tweaking it at, at, at the you know you're always trying to find a little bit more you're always trying to get a bit more out of the car yeah. feel and yeah and it's just really interesting what you can do to these cars even out of the box the settings you can play around with them yeah but then obviously you have bespoke parts um yeah. for especially bmw's um porsches yeah uh, even lamborghinis uh, audis a few yeah. things mclarens yeah mclarens yeah um which if you're just buying the car to drive down the king's road it's not going to benefit you probably in any no. shape or form but you, you've got to want to push it you've got to want to push it yeah. yeah and i think when you do start pushing some of these cars i had that r8 v10 recently hmm. brilliant road car but the minute i took it out of silverstone even with cup two tires in fact yeah. that probably even made it worse because the rear had so much traction yeah uh that every time i picked the throttle up it was just pushing wide yeah. and it was i wouldn't say frustrating because it was amazing i was very lucky to have that opportunity but but you could just feel that there was so much more potential underneath uh, and it just Definitely. wasn't set up right. And that was yep. a, an extreme example. But I think when yep. you get to, to the M cars, especially there's, there's so many little tweaks and I just can't wait for you to get my M2 here. Yeah, no, definitely. We'll, we'll put all our bits on that because they make a huge difference. And like I say, it's, it's that buzzword kinematics. It's, it's used a lot. Um, yeah. But what it effectively is, is controlling the arc patterns of all the arms through its motion yep. and, and using those arc patterns to benefit it to create more mechanical traction okay and, and that's effectively all it comes down to so it's different arm lengths you know different offset factors and that rotates the hub on throttle yep. and digs that tire into the ground so it gives a lot more traction yep. just by changing how the hub operates 
when it goes into bump. And it's, it's as straightforward as that. Straightforward. <laughs> well, to an extent. <laughs> in yeah. your head, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, honestly, the stuff you're showing me in there, I was following most of it because you explained it very well, but there's just, there's so many little intricacies. But mm. I mean, when I first discovered about alignment, how important it was, in fact, it was on one of my M2 videos, probably about yeah. two years ago. Um, I've had, I had the springs or something change. Yeah. Um, It'll knock it all out in the lower dose. Yeah, exactly. So it all been knocked out. And, but in the past I'd had that done and it, I couldn't feel it too badly, yep. but obviously something had been knocked and I took it to Snetterton and it was the most frustrating track that I'd ever had because the car, it was horrible. Under, under load, it would move left. Yeah. Uh, coming off the throttle, it would suddenly dart right or left. And, yep. and the whole, and that was my first, that was my first real like vivid, mm. Jesus, you need, the car needs to be set up really well. Definitely. And, yep. and, and, and that's, again, that's a bit of an extreme example, but I think, yeah, I can't, well, I can't wait to try this. Um, and I really can't wait to, to get the M2 down here and get some suspension proper yeah, set up. Um, but guys, you need to look these guys up on Instagram. Firstly, obviously your website's amazing because yep. you've written some really interesting geeky stuff. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. but it's, even down to, and I've got spaces on this car, as you guys know, we put 10, 10 mil spaces, yep. which if you read their article about it, it almost puts you off wanting to run spaces, but providing you keep them it's got to be a fine balance between aesthetics and exactly and it's always a playoff and it it will upset some things in the geometry but there are also some benefits so yep. it's always a playoff but you can definitely go too much and, and kill handling with spaces sure sure and just put things under too much load as well I suppose. yeah that's another downside if you go too wide yeah you do a lot of track stuff and road stuff we've set this or you've set this up more so yep. as, a, as a fast road car now yeah um because manufacturers you've got to remember these manufacturers build this sort of car, supercars, etc., to be safe yep. for the average punter on the road. And safe, unfortunately, is understeer predominantly, isn't yeah, it? Boring, understeer, yeah. Lift yeah. off and it'll recover, that sort of thing. Exactly. Yep. And even like, well, you had Ricky's, uh, Ricky living in our fast uh, 720 the other day. Yep. And even that sort of level of car is still set up to be safe and, and relatively normal feeling for uh, someone who can drive well exactly, um, yeah. uh, almost a little bit frustrating because you can't get the car's capabilities you can't get you can't use what That's it's designed it. for because yeah. it's set up safe so it's just unlocking um unlocking what the car is capable of so Definitely. um mate honestly it's been uh, yeah, no it's worries. been mega meeting you yeah, and you too. and really interesting honestly if if you weren't two and a half hours away, oh, yeah. <laughs> I think I'd, I'd be here bothering you all the time. They've even got like a simulator up there for when you wait and if your car comes down to get to get something done. And um, it's just yeah, it's just been an awesome awesome day and a massive learning experience for me. Yeah, no, um, glad to have you. Yeah, no, it's great. So yeah, but we'll see. We'll be back here soon with the M2. Yeah. So um, make sure you stay tuned for that. And obviously, I'll update you guys on how this drives over the next few videos. Still hasn't actually been run in yet, so I'm not going to push it yep. too hard. Um, but yeah, really looking forward to, to seeing what it's like on track very soon. Yep. Awesome. Cool. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. Make sure you do check out these guys on Instagram and their website's going to be in the link in the description below. And uh, yeah, thanks again, Matt. No worries. I'll see you soon. Yeah, no problem. One last thing, we actually weighed this on these really amazing looking scales and it has a full tank of fuel, as in I filled it up about three miles ago uh, and a few bits of my camera gear and stuff in the boot, but it's 17.35 is what it came out at on the scales, which actually isn't as bad as I thought. And I think, am I right in saying that's about M4. Eight, about M4 sort yeah. of weight, yeah. yeah. Which is, yeah, so F80, uh, F82 M4 weight. So actually, although it's definitely no lightweight, it's not actually that much heavier than the previous gen M3 and M4. So considering all the bracing and everything else it's got and the extra power, um, that's probably why it feels really impressive out on track. But anyway, right, I'm definitely going now. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> definitely going. <laughs> definitely going. Till the next time. <laughs>